All right, just a quick video going through some scriptures refuting the Gnostic Calvinist heresy of theistic determinism. Because Calvinism, they, they redefine words with their preferred definitions, and they define sovereignty as God, they make God into a cosmic micromanager where everything is determined, everything that happens is predetermined, God causes everything that happens. Um, this is not what the scriptures teach. You know, you do not find Calvinism if you just read scripture alone. And I've shown that in other videos as well, that you have to basically have Calvinist glasses and a pre-commitment to Calvinist theology to, to find Calvinism in the scriptures. Because uh, free will, you know, power of contrary choice is is taught in hundreds of verses from Genesis to Revelation. Meanwhile, Calvinists, they, they all they can do is isolate certain verses out of context, cherry pick scriptures to teach their Gnostic heresies. And that's exactly what Calvinism is. It's a Gnostic aberration. Uh, it is a Gnostic heresy brought in by Augustine and spread by Luther and Calvin. You do not find these Gnostic ideas of theistic determinism and fatalism and, and all this other stuff uh, prior to Augustine. And it's not to say that the church fathers are the authority, but it goes to show that Calvinism is not, because they claim that they're the historic, you know, orthodox uh, uh, interpretation of scripture. They're not. You do not find anybody before Augustine who taught these Gnostic heresies. So here's some scriptures that refute the, this uh, Calvinist Gnostic heresy of theistic determinism. Isaiah 30 verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. You know, goes against this idea that God causes everything that happens. We're clearly seeing that this is not the case. Isaiah 54 verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Again, you know, God is not causing this to happen. He's very explicitly teaching against that. Hosea 8, 4. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they, I'm sorry, have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. Not all rulers are, are uh, rulers are, are ordained or, or by God, or when they find themselves in power, it's not always caused by God. We see that very clearly right here. Zechariah 1.15 I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. What they want is the polar opposite of what God wants. Uh, theistic determinism is inconsistent with the totality of Scripture. Jeremiah 32, verse 35, And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to, ca to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they, that they should do this, that, sorry, that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. God is not caught, as another wicked, her another blasphemous wicked heresy of, of Calvinist Gnostic, her of, of Calvinist Gnostic doctrine that God actually causes sin. Because if it causes everything, then he also causes sin. What does he see, say right here? Neither came it into my mind. Not only did he command them not to do that, it wasn't even his idea for them to do it. But then the Calvinist Gnostic heretic says that sin was God's idea. Jeremiah 19 verse 5. Uh, they have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. But the Calvinist uh, has to say that it was the secret will of God. Chapter and verse, please. Show me a verse for secret will. I mean, talk about eisegesis, just reading your own theology into the text. You know, you do again, you do not find Calvinism if you just read scripture. You have to have a, a pre-commitment to your Gnostic heresy. Uh, Galatians 2, verse 17 and 18, we're going to see here that sin is not caused by God either. Sin is something that you, you do by your own choice, and it's something you do to yourself. Galatians 2, verse 17 and 18, But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the, the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. You have no one to, uh, to blame but yourself for your sins. You know, and the Calvinists, uh, they're full of cognitive distance. They don't want to come to the logical conclusion that if there's no free will, then there's no personal accountability. Because the Calvinists want to have it, wants to have it both ways. They try to make it seem like, oh, well, there's still personal accountability. You know, it's a contradiction. They cannot deal with the logical conclusion. You know, they're making Christ the minister of sin and cannot deal with the fact that that would remove personal accountability. I've done videos on that as well. Galatians 5, verse 6 to 8. For in uh, Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not, cometh not, 
of him that calleth you. God, uh, Jesus Christ wasn't causing them, uh, the Hebrew roots heresy, to, to slip into the, the uh, Galatian assembly. Very clearly, you very clearly see that. It, you know, it cometh not of the one of, of him. Paraphrasing, of course. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Therefore hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God who is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Plain and simple. God does not command the impossible. You know, uh, God gives you a free will choice to, to obey or disobey, and you have that ability. You know, I've set before you life and death. Choose life. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, uh, 30 verse 19. James chapter 1 verse 13 and 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. There, uh, then when lust, lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Compare this back to, I make myself a transgressor. You know, uh, they're drawn away by, you, by his own lust. You, your sin is your is entirely your own fault and your own work. It is God is not causing you to sin. That Ecclesiastes seven verse twenty nine says, you know, God made man upright, but you know, man has chosen it every other way. Paraphrasing, of course, but your sin is completely your own doing, your own choice, and and entirely your own fault. God has nothing to do with it. But the, the Gnostic Calvinist heretic thinks God causes sin. I mean, talk about just blasphemy. 1 Corinthians 14, 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all, the, all churches of the saints. Uh, Calvinist uh, theistic determinism is inconsistent with the, the uh, totality of Scripture. I mean, if you're a Calvinist, how do you how do you really answer this? It's very explicitly refuting your Gnostic heresy, you know? And they're going to find some kind of way to use their little eisegesis, oh, it's his secret will, or, you know, have to use all this logical inference. Why? Because they cannot just read it at face value. If you do not find Calvinism, if you just read Scripture, you have to find all this, you have to have a pre-commitment. So what they do is this pre-commitment to tulip, they have to make the verses fit in the tulip, so they have to come up with all these unbiblical notions that they will fallaciously insert into scriptures they take out of context, and then they'll have to write off all the verses as secret will, or, you know, uh, it, it's anthropomorphic expression, or all this other, you know, eisegesis-based, you know, ways of, of explaining away the text. Calvinism is Gnostic heresy, plain and simple. It is inconsistent with the totality of Scripture, and it is not most cert it is most certainly not the historic uh, biblical interpretation. Again, you, you do not find anybody before Augustine who taught these Gnostic heresies. The first three hundred years, you know, free will was taught, and again, that that that, that doesn't prove that it's biblical per se, because Scripture alone is the final authority. Let God be true, and every man a liar. But if Calvinists are going to claim to be the historic Orthodox position, well, they better be able to show anybody before Augustine who taught these Gnostic heresies. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.